Hiya and welcome. Today I have a tutorial for you making a waterfall card. So a waterfall card has a little pull feature here and as you pull it these bits here flip over and then back. So as you can see it works like this. You can use this on a card, an actual gift card, or as I have here, this is a dashboard for a planner. So this wraps around my B6 size planner insert and I have it in my traveler's notebook. Just to show you up close, you can see the front here. And this one here I've made with the That's So 90s kit from Planners Anonymous. And as I pull it, you can see the decoration inside here and here I'll just pull it a bit more you can see what's in here and on this side and I'll just pull it a bit more and there's just a whole lot of 90s sort of icons there and then also right at the bottom we've got what up girlfriend and the little pen. I don't know if you remember these, if you're old enough, if you remember these pens, but we've got the little pen there on the pull tab. And so you just push that back up and everything closes and pull it. And you can see it all. It's just a little fun thing, really. Just a fun decorative thing to play with. So what I thought I'd do today is using the latest Planners Anonymous kit which I have, which is the Vineyard kit, I thought I'd show you how to make one of these waterfall features. With this tutorial I'm also going to put it on a planner dashboard. So I've cut this dashboard here, it's 7 inches high and I cut my dashboards at 10 and 1 quarter inches wide just so it can wrap around the little notebook inside it. So that's there, that's all cut ready to go. I'm going to make a waterfall feature this size again. It's pretty much designed to hold these cards. As you can see there's just a small border around the card that comes in the Planners Anonymous kit. You can adjust the sizes of your waterfall to be whatever size you want. And they don't need to be rectangles, they can be squares or whatever. So you can make any relevant adjustments, but I just want to make it to fit these quote cards inside it. I've just gone ahead and cut most of the cardstock already. So I've cut these four rectangles out of the double-sided paper that comes in the Planners Anonymous kits. And I've cut these at two and three quarter inches by three and a half inches so approximately seven centimeters by nine centimeters and that's just to allow a small border around a card when I use a card on it so I have those and I've cut this here I've cut this from American Craft textured cardstock it's 80 pound cardstock and I've cut that at 10 and a half inches across and two and three quarter inches down. So 27 centimeters by seven centimeters. The first thing to do is to actually score the card and that enables the little waterfall cards to flip along the score lines. I have this We Are Memory Keepers trim and scoreboard so I'm just going to score it on this and then I'll quickly show you after I've scored it how you can score card if you don't have any type of scoring tool. I've just got this pushed up to zero and I'm going to score it at three and a half inches, four inches, four and a half inches, and five inches. I'm just going to then flip it and score it on those same score lines. If you don't have a score tool, even a little handheld scoring tool, which you can purchase, you can do this sort of thing. So if you just 
have a metal ruler well it doesn't need to be metal if you have a ruler and just a pen and just run the pen down where you want to score it you can see the score line I've made with the pen on that side and just flip it over and you can run down there also it doesn't matter if the pen puts ink on here because you're not actually going to see this so you can see there that's nicely scored along there just using a pen and a roller going back to this piece I've got my four score lines there and I just want to fold them really well going in both directions You want them pretty much to be able to accordion on themselves and also what you can do if you have any type of um, bone folder you can just also use that just to give it a nice good score line Okay, so we've done that and that's the first step of the process. I have this bit of cardboard all ready to go to attach my cards to and you can see there's about a half inch down the bottom there when I have it folded and that half inch there is actually the pull tab. So if you look at this I used a pink coordinating cardboard and that little half inch is the pull tab there which I've just shaped here using one of my punches. So the first step in the process is to get your four bits of cardboard and organize the order that you want them to be in. I like to decorate both sides of my cardboard as you can see here but some people only decorate this side here that flips and don't, they don't worry about decorating this side but I like to have both of them decorated. So what I like to do is I like to get, if I'm putting it on a patterned card, card stock, in this case I am, I'm putting it on this planner dashboard, I actually like to play with it with the colours around it just so I can get a good idea of what to do. Now I have an idea of what I'm going to do in the little pull out part and I know that I want this card to be on the bottom. So I'll just place that one on the bottom and I know that I want to have these trees flipping up with that just based on what I've already decided I'm putting in the pull out bit. So we'll just set that one there and then I need to decide the order of these two. Unfortunately I've got lots of green there now and um, I'm left with the two red ones. I'm going to put the pattern on this side and that's just going to mix up the colour a little bit there and then on this side I'm going to have the red. So what you need to do is you need to flip this up and make sure it's the right way. So the wine bottles would like to be the right way up when it flips so I need to decorate the card this way. It's quite green here but I have some ideas of how I can introduce some more of the redder tones on the bottom of the cards so that's okay. You can now go about this in two different ways you can decorate all your individual parts of patterned paper and then assemble it or you can assemble it and then decorate it because I often make mistakes with getting things upside down I like to actually assemble it and then decorate it so I'm just going to do that so I've just picked all of these up and popped them like this and now I'm going to get some adhesive if you have a good tape runner you can just use tape runner on here which is easy um, I don't seem to have a good tape runner so I like to use score tape I use this for everything plus then I'm not mucking about with liquids and all sorts of things just with the score tape I'm just going to run it along there This 
one is I believe half inch yes this is half inch wide score tape so I just need to be very careful with the lines to try and get it in the right place because my score marks are only half an inch Now I've put my tape down, or if you have a tape runner, just do it one at a time. Just do your tape runner, stick your card down, put your tape runner, put your next card. So I'm doing it the same way in that I'm just going to remove the liner from this one. And I'm going to pop my first card down. If you look at this, I'm actually putting it right on the bottom section of the card. So I want it to more or less line up with this card here. And this card can actually get glued completely down. It doesn't flip, but we don't glue it down just yet because we need to do something else. So we'll get to the something else in time. So in the meantime, just the glue along the top of there. And then take the next one off and put the next card down. So I want the trees to flip up to be the right way. So it needs to go down like so. So all we've done now is adhered this patterned paper to the longer rectangle that we made. I like to just go through and push everything down, make sure it's all glued correctly. And then if you hold this little back bit here and then pull on the longer bit, you can see those starting to flip over like so. They might need a bit more creasing to do it really well, but we can fiddle with that as we go. Now that I have all the cards attached, I like to decorate the cards and decorate the pull-out part and then assemble it onto the card that I'm putting it on. With this one here, I have one of the little quote cards on the front, Take Me Back to the 90s. I liked that because then it flipped through all of the 90s sorts of images. And with this one, I think I'm also going to put a quote card on the front. So I'd like to put this quote card on the front. Age only matters if you are a cheese. Also, just a little side note, I do apologise if you don't like cheese or if you don't like wine or you don't like picnicking or you don't like vineyards. This is the theme of this Planners Anonymous kit because it is called Vineyard. So even if you don't like the theme or the colours or anything that I'm doing, you can still watch this tutorial because you can still understand the technicalities of how to assemble one of these waterfall cards because they really are a lot of fun. And I'm just going to use my tape runner on that. It's just a cheap tape runner, but it seems to stick reasonably well. And I'm just going to pop that, just eyeball it, just to be it approximately in the center of the square there. You can then do other things like attach die cuts, stickers, um, stamps, anything you like. You can stamp directly onto these if you want to. You can stamp directly on them, write on them, put stickers, put die cuts, anything at all. I'm just going to use some bits and bobs that I've got in the kit here and just sort of mumble my way through and see what I come up with. 
So I may come back to this one and add a small sticker or something. In the meantime, I'm just going to try and understand the flow of what I'm doing. Uh, you might think I'm absolutely crazy, but I actually really love this die cut that came in the kit. And I think I'd like to pop that somewhere. Oh no, <laughs> my tape runner. Okay, I seem to have just broken my tape runner, so that wasn't very smart. I'm just going to use my Tombow removable adhesive tape runner, but this I find isn't very sticky. It doesn't seem to stick for very long at all. So once I've finished filming this, I will need to go and find something to adhere these with a bit better. Now hopefully you can see with this one here, I've actually got bits poking out the side here. You can leave them like that if you want. It doesn't actually interfere with the flipping of it. If you see here, it doesn't interfere with the flipping of it, but I don't think it looks all that great. So I like to just trim these bits off. And so now you can see we've only got part of a sheep. We haven't got the back part of the sheep. You can possibly also see they're not adhered all that well. But just for the purposes of this, I'll just carry on with the adhesive that I have. Sometimes when you cut die cuts off, you'll have a useful little part that you can then use somewhere else. This is a little part of a back of a sheep. I don't think it's a particularly useful part, but sometimes you do actually have useful little parts. Okay, so we've got that there. I'll just flip that over. I just like to check whether die cuts are hanging down the bottom here. Sometimes it's really cute when it's closed to see little bits of things, but in this case I just wanted the die cut to be in there and I wanted it hidden when it was closed, so I've just checked that that's okay. And now I've got this little quote here and I have just chopped a little bit off the top and the bottom of that because you can see here the size that it was. But this little top bit here ends up being half an inch smaller than the bottom piece. So to put the quote there, I just need to trim it a little bit. And we'll just pop that down. I just eyeballed it to trim it. And I just eyeball things to glue them as well, really. So that says cheese, wine and everything fine. And now we've got the trees here. On the pull-out part, I wanted to put this here. You're the cheese to my wine. So I want to glue it there on this back part. And I want to make sure it can't be seen when it's closed. So a good way of doing that is simply to close it. And then just make sure that you're going to glue it somewhere uh, where it will fit. And that's about half an inch from the bottom. And then just check that. And then also check you can read what you want to read when you're closing it. So I'm doing that simply by holding this back part here and flipping it. So I can see that that will work or the cheese to my wine. And then what I have here is I've trimmed a photo that I found lying around. It's actually um, part of a wedding photo that someone just snapped um, at my wedding. I'm just a little bit camera shy, so I've just got that sticky note there. And you can see there's people's heads in the way. Um, sorry about the glare. <laughs> you can see there are little bits of people's head 
heads there as well so I will need to do something to cover that up but this wasn't an official photo by any means this was just a snapshot so I want to just glue this down it is a glossy photo so I'm sorry about the glare that's coming off there and then I need to use some die carts to cover up these heads and things. I, might, I can't decide between the red grapes or the green grapes. I think I might use the red grapes. And then just trim the rest of these grapes off. And then I might just use a few of the little trimmed off bits because there's a little bit of something in the corner here also. Would have been nice to have a trimmed off leaf. I don't think I've got one. Okay, that might work. So hopefully here you can see what I've done. I've put the die cut here to cover the parts of people's heads that were in the way and then just used a little bit of the cut off die cut to cover a little bit that was also in the corner of the photo there. So now when you open it, you will see first of all the hill and the trees and then the actual photo itself and then the you're the cheese to my wine. Okay, a little bit soppy, I know, but that's quite cute. You can further embellish things as you like, um, doing all sorts of things. For example, I could find a little sticker. I always love these ones, the little mini duo. I'm just thinking what they'll look like with some little feet sticking out there, like so. It could be quite cute, actually. So I might just pop them here. With this card here for the tab, I put little cute edges on here, just using my We Are Memory Keepers tab punch board. So you can do whatever you like really to shape the pull tab, or you can just leave the pull tab exactly as it is. It's totally up to you. All I did was use this tab punch board. I always practice on something before I actually use it just to make sure I get it the right way so for example here I wanted the look with this little corner here so I need to put this in this way in order to get the little corner and then just flip it and do the same now we've got the little pull tab I might just have a bit of a look to see if I've got a sticker I can pop on there there's a cute little corkscrew sticker in the sticker kit so I'm just going to actually pop that on there that sort of means pull doesn't it um, I might put it this way and I just sort of eyeball it to be about the center so that's different and I might actually just run a little bit of washi or something along this one I'll just see what it looks like with a bit of this washi this washi came in the vineyard kit also and it has pictures of cheeses and their names on it so I might just pop <laughs> it says stinky I wonder if stinky is blue cheese might just pop some of the washi along there and that just changes the look of it from there I'm not sure if I like it or not I might actually put the washi so there's a little bit of green at the top and the bottom of it yes that's better there you can see there so that's what it'll look like from the front when it's closed now that we've decorated this part of it, it's time to assemble it all. When I was cutting all the cardstock, I also cut this piece here out. 
and this one is one inch by five inches so about two and a half centimeters by 12 centimeters and this is the part that holds it all together so what you need to do is put a little bit of adhesive in the center of this and this is to adhere it to this back cardboard piece here and we want to place it about an inch from the bottom and sort of approximately in the center so hopefully you can see what I'm doing there so I've glued it onto that piece and now that I have that there I can also glue this piece onto here so I'll just quickly do that So if you look at this now, you have this piece of cardboard going through your back flip card. And then what you want to do is fold this bit over and then fold your piece of cardboard right round the back here. Put some adhesive on the back of them, like so. And then you want to attach this to whatever you're attaching it to. I just sort of eyeball the center and poke it down and then you've just got those two points of adhesion there. I've just popped the planner dashboard in my traveler's notebook and I'll just show you the waterfall in action. And there we have it. And so it ends with you're the cheese to my wine. I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and hopefully it's inspired you to create something also. So you can create a planner dashboard, you can punch holes in here and have a planner divider, you can have a greeting card, you can use the waterfall feature in so many different ways and as I said before you can change the size of it for your needs. I've enjoyed creating with you today and hopefully you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and it inspires you. Thanks so much for watching and maybe I'll catch you in my next video. Bye.